Okay, we're pretty much going to start from scratch on this uh, on this new function. So let's let's just get rid of everything in here because pretty much all of it is um, irrelevant. And we'll talk about what we're going to do in a second once I've got rid of all of this. So pretty much all of this is going. And we don't need ion manip anymore. So let's get rid of that as well. I shouldn't really have things hanging around, which we don't need. Um, and we're not going to have any of this either. We're going to have a new class I've always wanted to have my own sports car. So we're going to have an Andy sports car. Isn't that great? Look at that, that's brilliant. Okay, now what we're going to try and do in here is show you something called a class variable or a static variable. If, um, if somebody goes to my, um, one of my car dealerships, and they want to get a new car. The only thing, I mean, they're all going to be the same, except the only thing you can choose is, is the color. So before I've built even my first one, there are zero Andy sports cars in existence. And then someone comes along to buy my first ever, ever one. So they're going to say, I'd like an Andy sports car, please. I'll say, fine. Uh, what color would you like? And they'll say, I'd like a silver one, please. So I go to my factory, I build a new Andy sports car, and I make it silver. There we are. I then hand them back a key so that they can access uh, that particular, oh, what's wrong with that? Oh, I haven't got a constructor there for that. Let's just put that constructor in then. So I need to take a constructor, I need to take a string, and um, let's build that. So that's Andy Sports Car. Andy Sports Car. Um, it is taking a string. It's the ordered color. And I'm going to set a private variable called color, spelt correctly, uh, as we say in England, uh, where we invented English. Um, it's going to be a string and in here we'll say color equals order color so I'll get all my paint pots in the factory to match what was requested super I think we're all there so we've got a new car now at this point here where there should be in existence one car now what we'd also like to do is we'd like to create a second car. Somebody sees the first one and says, that's great. Can I have a can I have one of those? It's brilliant. So this person is going to go for a black car. I'm just using a different construction for uh, making objects. Uh, this is this is um, I think using heap memory rather than stack memory. Um, that makes it easier to, to create and delete things just because I need to delete these objects to show something. Now at this point, so somebody comes to the, goes to the Andy sports car dealership, says, can I have a new Andy sports car, please? Can I have a black one? Can I make it a new one? It can give me a key afterwards so I can drive, get in the car and drive it away. Fine. At this point, there should be two sports cars. Now a few years later, someone's driven really badly, had a bad accident, and we have to crush the silver car. So we're going to delete the silver car. So we put it in the crusher and we crush it and we get it down to the right number of, you know, uh, bits of metal so we can make a new car. Um, so at this point there should be one car in the world left, this black one. And then that person goes and drives really badly and stupidly as well. So we have to put their car in the crusher. And so now we're down to zero cars. So, how can we keep track of all this information? Each object gets a key. So there's a blueprint. There's a blueprint that I'm using to build my sports cars. It's called the class. But every time I build a new one of these things, it's a new, it's a fully formed object. There's one blueprint in the world for these. There could be 10 million objects based on that blueprint. And 10 million keys. But how can I keep track of how many cars I'm building? 
how many cars I'm crushing because they're always brought back to my factory to be crushed. Well, there's going to be a book in the factory and every time we build one, we're going to put an entry in the book in the factory saying we've got one. We build another one, we put another entry in the book and we've got two. It gets brought back to be scrapped and we strike out one of the entries. So now we're down to one car in the book and then the second car comes back and it gets crushed and we have to strike out the last entry in the book so the book has no more valid entries in it. We can do that. We can have this special book and we're going to call these things static variables. So, and also static member functions as well. So we need a couple of things here. Well, we need a few bits and pieces, but we need this book um, and it's going to have some entries in it and we're going to store the entries in this static integer variable and we're going to access that because we're never going to have an object to access this from the main program because it's not to do with an object it's the, the, this book in the factory is not to do with a particular car it's to do with all of the cars so we, we need to have a function which we can get at later um, it's going to be static get car count do notice the use of this word here and here. Now, no object is, is ever going to set this to a particular number. So every time one comes in, we, we put it up, and every time one gets crushed, we put it down again. But what does it start at? Well, we'd like it to start at zero. So first thing we might want to do here is explicitly say is to explicitly say that in my factory, as I build it, I'm going to order this book and I'm going to have a blank page. There we are. I'm going to set it to zero. This is before we do anything in main, before we do anything essentially, we, before we create anything, delete anything, we order this book, blank pages. There's the blank pages there. And we kind of use this explicit notation to do it because no object is ever going to set that to zero because objects when they come in they push it up or put it down but they never set it to zero so we've got this explicit fully qualified call to set that thing to zero now when we do construct one as there there's the constructor we've got to put this thing up so if someone comes in with the order for the silver Mercedes uh, the silver sports car fantastic put the car count up what that also means is we also need to have, um, let's just have a little message as well. So we'll say, see out um, new silver car constructed. Lovely. And then we push the car count up. Fantastic. Now, how do we get the car down once once we get these things crushed? So when we crush these cars, how do we get that number down again? So we need a destructor. So let's put a destructor in. There's the definition. And then we just need to do this. And the sports car... There we go. And what we'll do is we'll just put a little sanity message saying old. Car crushed. Very sad. Very sad about this. Here we're very happy. down there we're very sad so and an M line of course so that's oh yeah we obviously missed out the most important thing there while I was doing the cosmetic stuff so take it down and then after that point of course the the object is destroyed and all the memories taken out of heap and, and given to somebody else to play with now during the program um, we'd like to have a track of all these different 
thing. Let's just see if this compiles first of all, see if we can pick up any silly errors. How does it run? Yeah, car constructed, happy, happy, happy. Car crushed, sad, sad, sad. What we'd like to put out then is we'd like to put out these counts so that we know we so that should be zero, that should be one, that should be two, that should be one, that should be zero. So one car created, two cars created, one of them crushed leaving one, the other one crushed leaving nothing. So let's do that now. Oh, before we do this, I just wanted to get this out of the way while we're here. Um, there's a special pointer. I think it should be called P this. I don't remember from the last lesson with this arrow notation. But it isn't called P this. In every object, whenever we are in an object method, we get a special pointer kind of given to us for free called this. And it can be used to access elements of the object. So as in the last lesson, which you might want to refresh yourself by watching, if um, you ever want to explicitly sort of say, wh what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the object we're currently working with. You do get this built in for free notation pointer. You know, it really should be called P this, but it's not. It's called this it's a special pointer that can access all of the objects elements. So you can put that in if you want to or, uh, or leave it out. It's, Often you don't need it, but sometimes it's just sometimes you do actually need it, and sometimes it's just handy just to say what you're talking about, just to be explicit about what you're talking about. So there it is, in case you ever need it. This. Right. Let's uh, let's output these numbers just to check that we're doing everything right, and this is going to be via that special um, special function there, get car count, which is a class function because it's static. How do we access it though? There's no object to access it with. You know, if well, there might be, but if we've got nothing left, and P black car and P silver car have been deleted, how do we access it? Well, we always access it for an explicit call, which is similar to this explicit setting there. So let's just put that function in then. Get car count. Now it's already been declared as a static, so we don't need to we don't need to labour that again. So Andy Sports Car and um, that's all this is going to do is return a car count. An error? What's what's that? What's causing that? Andy sports car. Oh, Andy. So it's Andy sports car, isn't it? There we are. So that should be available. And again, we'll often, as you know, right here we don't have an object at this point in order to be able to get out a zero. So we have to make an explicit call. So count of cars is. And then we have to do the following an explicit, fully qualified call like that. Now I'm go I was going to just cut and paste copy and paste this five times, but that's kind of breaking my own rules. So what I'm going to do, because if you if you're you're doing that in real life, you really ought to write a function. So I'm going to write a function to do this because copying and pasting the same thing several times is a bit of a bit of a bit of an evil offense really so I'll put it all there and again this this shows you that even even the functions can call this class um, defined um, subroutine not just the main program so let me just show you that as well so let's just put this message in anyway uh, five times output count That should come out as a zero. This one should come out as a one. This one should come out as a two. This one should come out as a one. And then this should come out as a zero. All access via that, that class subroutine. So let's give it a whiz. Lovely jubbly.
seems to be working. So the count of cars is zero. Then we construct one, a new silver one, hooray. So now the count is one. And now we construct a new black one. Fantastic, everyone's happy. Now there's two of them. Now we crush the silver one. Down to one car in the world, and we crush the black one. And now we're down to zero uh, cars in the world. So that is how we do static class variables. I think that that is enough for the moment.